Hey, this is Chris. Hope you're doing all right today. This tutorial, we're going to go over uh, some different methods for just using plain CSS in a Gatsby project by utilizing global styles, CSS modules, and then we'll talk about how to implement variables as well. So in this project, I've just got the Gatsby default starter. So all I did in my terminal was run Gatsby new and then the name of my project, I call it Gatsby styles. And then I ran Gatsby develop. So uh, pause here if you need to catch up and, uh, and we're gonna keep on keeping on. So I've got it uh, running in the browser here. The first thing that I'm gonna do is crack open this uh, components here. So by default, Gatsby comes up with this nice layout.css and lots of things are taken care of out of the box in terms of default styling. And what's happening is that layout is being imported into this layout.js file, which is then wrapping every single page. So that's one strategy for implementing uh, global styles out of the box, which is totally great, but you might not always want to wrap every single page identically. Um, and you might wanna have a, a different strategy for, uh, for applying styles. Um, and then you also might want to avoid the issue of uh, naming collisions with your classes and IDs and stuff. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First, we're actually going to get rid of this layout.css. And then let's clean up some of this style stuff here too. So we'll get rid of this in the div. Uh, I think that's good. We can now delete layout.css. In our pages, index.js, uh, this style we can leave, that's applying to the, just the image. So that's looking fine. All right, so how do we get to uh, global styles? Well, out of the box, again, this default starter comes with this gatsby-browser.js file. If you don't have it and you want to create it, make sure that the spelling is exactly as you see here. I'm going to open this up. I'm gonna leave it to the side for now. So I just deleted the comments in there. And this Gatsby browser is, uh, it, it can be utilized for different like wrapper components for your Gatsby projects. So in source, I'm gonna create a new folder called styles. Oops, stylers. Let's uh, rename that styles. And then inside, we'll do global.css. And let's do something like uh, these anchor tags. So let's do like all anchor tags. We want text decoration of none. We want their color to be black, let's say. We're gonna put a transition so that we, when we hover over them, it'll be 300 milliseconds and we'll do like that. Uh, let's do, let's grab this Rebecca purple. Or no, no, not, whoops. 300 milliseconds on the color property. And then when we hover over it, We'll do, we're gonna grab that Rebecca purple, but we'll lighten it up a little bit. So let's just, so it'll be easier to see. Okay. Well, nothing's happening with my styles yet. Well, this is where that Gatsby browser file comes into play. So here, all you need to do is import, we'll do dot slash source slash styles slash global dot CSS. We hit save. It's gonna refresh the page for us. And now you'll notice that these anchor tags, when you hover the, over them are now purple, there's no more underline. So we've now applied our global styling, which is awesome. So next, wanna dive in really quickly to CSS variables. We're gonna use these here directly, and then we're also gonna use them in a minute when we get into modules. So, one common strategy for using CSS variables is to use the root pseudo selector. So we'll do colon root, and then we can do like dash dash purple. And we'll just grab this RGB here, cut it out, paste it. And then down here, we can just do var dash dash purple. And now let's see if this still works. 
It does. So you can see that subtle highlighting of purple. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, like, why would I do that? Why wouldn't I just keep the RGB down here? Uh, the reason being is when your project gets a lot bigger, it's one uh, one thing to you know have to replace one RGB value here in the root versus going through all of your different styles. Maybe you've got different um, files going on with different styles and going through all of that is, is kind of a pain. So this is one strategy for implementing variables and we've got that in the same um, in the same file here. So another strategy for styling um, involves getting away from global styles. So maybe like all of your anchor tags or all of your buttons or all of your margins and things like that between like, you know, header tags and whatnot are, um, are common across all of your elements, across all of your website. But maybe you've got some individual styles that you want to apply to individual components or pages. One great way to attack this with regular CSS is to use uh, what's called CSS modules. And so what modules are, are a way of uh, coupling your CSS with the component that you're, they're trying to style. So as opposed to using global styles, you're, you're tying your, uh, your style to the individual components. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So in my components, I'm going to create a new folder called header. And then I'm going to move this header JS into the header folder. You don't have to do this at all, but uh, one thing that I like to do is all of my components have their own folders. You know, you can change this into like index JS. There's a lot of different strategies for for doing this, but this helps me uh, keep everything nice and organized. And then in here, I'm going to create a new file called header.module.css. Now this, uh, let's see, there's no, let's see, header. So this is an import issue. Let's see, layout is trying to grab it from dot slash header. And we'll do one more slash header again. And that should fix it. So that was just an import issue because I added it to a folder. So now let's see this header. This header has some styles in it. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that inline styling there inline styling on this div, on this h1, and on this link. And so now we've just got the, the raw component without any styling, aside from the global styles. So now if I save that, this link still has that purple hover, but there's no background or anything because we took that all off. So in this module, what we can do is this is just going to look like regular CSS. So like, let's make a header class and let's do like background color and let's actually grab our purple and hit save. Okay. Nothing yet. So if I go into header and I import styles from dot slash header dot module dot CSS. And then I just tack on this class name and I'm going to do styles to access this styles object here, styles dot header. And like magic, <laughs> so I'll need to rethink the uh, hover effect because that blends into the background when I hover over this link, but you can see now, that instead of you know wrapping it in in quotes and doing like header like this you access it off of this styles object here and then it's it's all this all looks the same especially when you're 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 coming to this module.css so as long as you name it whatever dot module.css then what it's actually going to do behind the scenes is if i crack this open in the inspector and you look at this header Remember I said that the, the big reason to use this is to avoid naming collisions and to make sure that your classes are all unique. If you look at this, it's not just dot header as the class name, it's header uh, dash module dash dash header. So these automatically get generated for us in order to ensure that they're unique and that you don't have any naming collisions. 
So these are a couple really powerful tools that you can use for styling your, your Gatsby projects. Of course, like I mentioned at the beginning, if you are using the same layout component on all of your pages, then that's a perfectly fine way to go about that. And you could, uh, you could use your variables and everything in much the same way just by using that layout CSS file that comes in initially. But a great way to attack this without, uh, without using that or even in combination for some pages that maybe uh, aren't using the shared layout is to utilize Gatsby browser by importing that global style sheet, creating this there with all of your global styles, and then breaking down individual components uh, into modules with the component itself, the React component, and then the um, style, uh, style file there to make it a, a little unique module. So hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. And uh, until next time, have a good one.